Hello there, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and Pop! OS 20.10 is here. Uh, okay, <laughs> it was here about two months ago, but I'm just now getting to it, so sue me. I thought, now that I've had a little bit of a chance to play around with this new version of the operating system, that I'd sort of record a little video along the lines of my 20.04 video from a while back, and just talk about my thoughts on the update. So first off, let's quickly run through what changed from 20.04 to now. So there's a fairly short list of changes. You can actually read them all on uh, System76's blog. The quick rundown is we've got a new version of the Linux kernel, a new version of GNOME, a new version of the Deb package format supported, which probably doesn't really affect any of you, but uh, we also have some changes to pop shell, the tiling window manager, and we have fractional scaling, which is neat. We also have hybrid graphics mode update, which doesn't really affect me, but if you're running a System76 laptop with support for that, that's kind of neat as well. Now let's talk a little bit about the significant changes from a user-facing standpoint. So the first thing that you'll probably notice when you update is the new version of GNOME, which has a couple of little tweaks in it. Uh, I'll link to the actual change log on GNOME's website, also in the description, so you can peruse the full details. But probably the most obvious change that you'll encounter is really minor. It's small, but it's so nice. I saw this and just jumped for freaking joy, <laughs> which is when you go, when you do the power log off thing here in GNOME to reboot your computer, you now have just in under this menu, suspend, restart, power, and log out, all listed right here. So in 20.04, what you would have to do is you do power log all out, right? You'd hit power off or power and then from there, you would have to select these. So there was a, an extra click where you click the thing and a little window would pop up and you'd have to click the right thing from there and then it would actually reboot. So if you use the, the GUI to power off and reboot your computer, uh, that's a nice little change. And there are a variety of other little tweaks to GNOME, but that's the big one. And um, some of the GNOME core apps have also gotten updates like Calendar and GNOME Web and a few other things like that. Another thing that got changed is we now have access to fractional display scaling. So we actually have this turned on right now. Um, you can see there's this fractional scaling slider you can check now, and that will allow you to set the display scale to 125, 150, or 175%. Uh, without this, you only have access to 100 and 200. I have it on 125 right now, uh, just because if I change it mid-video, it breaks things. But so just to demonstrate what it looks like, this stuff is a little bit bigger. This is a 1440p monitor. Honestly, I don't use it. Just leave it at 100% scale. That's fine by me. But if you're using a 4K display or something like that, I could see this being useful. Now, it's not perfect. Uh, so, for example, even if we look at the title for this simple screen recorder window, you can see that isn't scaled appropriately with everything else. And there's some other issues with it, too. But it's, it's a nice step in the right direction towards supporting higher resolution displays, which have historically been a pain point on Linux. One thing I will say is I have had constant issues with turning the damn thing off <laughs> once I turn it on. So let me just demonstrate this real quick. Uh, what I want to do is I want to disable fractional scaling and go back to 100% scaling. So I'm going to go back to 100% on these monitors. And when you start changing the scaling here, you'll notice it it causes a big mess up here with the displays. But we can just you know put those back to where they're supposed to be. And so now we have 100% scaling across my three displays. As it turns out, Simple Screen Recorder doesn't like it whenever you try to change the display scale while it's running. And so. I don't have the image of the hilarity that ensues when you hit apply, but suffice it to say that it does not work uh, at all. Uh, in fact, I've actually managed to completely freeze my computer 
and have to do a hard reboot to recover from the fractional scaling thing not working. So as soon as this, I'm done recording this video, I'm going to be probably spending a little bit of time trying to get this thing off again and then never touch it. <laughs> but it might be something worth playing around with for you. Uh, maybe you'll have better luck with it than, than I do. And I'm thinking part of the problem might be the fact that I have uh, three monitors of which one of them is actually a totally different resolution from the other two. And it's possible that this monitor is causing issues. So I'll play around with it and see if I can't figure out exactly why it's breaking. But you know what? It does break and that kind of sucks. Uh, another change that is to me quite significant is to pop shell. So this is the tiling window manager extension developed by system 76. And actually the reason why I switched to pop OS 20.04 in the first place is I was an Arch Linux user rocking the i3 window manager. And I saw this cool new pop shell thing in a video and thought, you know, that looks like that does most of what I use i3 for. I wasn't by any means a power user of i3. Uh, in fact, honestly, the way I used it was probably hurting my workflow more than helping it. <laughs> but I did like some of the tiling features. So I thought, what the hell, let's try switching over and give this thing a shot. It looks a little bit prettier and it looks like things more or less just work. And I did and it was great. But Pop! OS was missing one critical feature that i3 had, and I've definitely been feeling its absence. So I'm glad to see it finally get added here in 20.10. And that is a stacking, stacking of windows. So let me show you exactly what that entails. Uh, if you're not already familiar with this, you can turn on the tiling window mode with uh, super and then the Y key. And this is going to make it so that all the new windows you create are going to automatically tile. So for example, if I make a couple terminal windows here, you can see they pop in and we get this nice Fibonacci spiral going on. Now, what stacking allows you to do is, let me just pop up another terminal window here, is what if I wanted to have multiple windows open on say one half of my screen right here uh, and I wanted to be able to toggle between them but I wanted to leave this thing in place. So say I had a couple of terminals going and maybe some documentation over here and I wanted to leave the documentation open uh, but also be able to page through my different terminals over here. Well this is what window stacking is for. So the way that you turn it on now that it's here is select the the window that you want to build the stack on top of and the stack will be the same size as that window so all windows you add to the stack will be the same size as the one that you initiate the stack on in this case the stack will take up this whole side so select the window you want do super key and s and you will see we get a little uh, honestly kind of ugly orange banner up here now, if I have my window stack selected and I make a new window, you'll see what happens is the windows actually stack in that same space. So uh, you can see up at the top here, I have three tabs now and I can cycle between them either by using the mouse and clicking on each one. And you can see the active tab is highlighted in orange uh, or you can just use your standard left and right navigation keys. So super L and H will let you go uh, back and forth through these tabs. Now, if you want to take a window and remove it from a tab stack and sort of stick it out on its own, you could do that pretty easily as well. What you have to do is do super enter and that's gonna highlight your currently selected window in orange like that and then you can pull that out of the tab stack by moving it in a particular direction. So if I hit the H key, it's going to pop up on this side of the tab stack. If I hit the L key, it'll pop up on the other side on the right. And I believe I can pop it top and bottom. So let me hit J and pull it to the bottom. So as you can see, it's now just extracted this window from my tab stack. My tab stack is still up here. It just has two terminals now and has actually um, shrunk a little bit. And then when you're done, uh, you can just hit the escape key 
and that will get rid of the that selection thing and you are good to go again. And you can use the same process to get windows into a tab stack as well. So if I want to put this window back in my stack, I can just do uh, super enter and then hit K and pull it into there. And if I hit H, it's going to come off on that side. L puts it back in, hitting L again is going to move me through the stack. And then I can pull the window on the end of the stack out like that. Now that is a little bit annoying uh, in that, for example, if I have some text here and I want to take this window and move it onto the right hand side of my stack, I have to cycle all the way through the stack before it will pop over there. Now, nice, conveniently, it, it does actually pop that window over there. It's not like I have to physically take this window and shift it. Uh, in fact, I believe that's what this is doing, is shifting the location of the window in the stack. So I'm pulling it through. But, you know, it's not a bad solution for that. And we can escape. And there we go. Now, if you want to turn the tab stack off, I keep saying tab stack. Can you tell that I use Vivaldi? You have to use the Windows S or the Super S again, but it's only going to work if you remove all of the windows from the stack. So I'm going to do Super Enter, pull that thing off, come back here, Super Enter, pull that thing off. And so now my stack is basically disassembled aside from one window. This is the window with my stack and I can do a Super S and turn that stack off. And now you'll notice you get some kind of interesting um, scaling and spacing and stuff. It's it's not perfect from an aesthetic standpoint, but it does work pretty well. And so I'm very happy to see tab stacking uh, make an appearance here. And as far as substantial changes, uh, that's about it. Now I will say that I have had some issues uh, with 20.10. I updated from 20.04 to 20.10. And so this isn't a fresh install. And there were some things that aren't quite working right or that I wish were working a little bit better. Uh, and of course, this is what's going to happen anytime you update. But I thought I would mention those at this point as well. Uh, so first off, really minor. But with 20.10, Suddenly, all of my LSP plugins, of which I have a whole bunch, are showing up as discrete applications in my application launcher. So I have a whole bunch of these LSP things cluttering everything up. Now, I don't actually use this application launcher for much of anything, so it doesn't affect me too much. And I can go in and clean them out, and I will it at some point. But it was a bit of a bummer to see that. I'm not quite sure what changed that made that happen, but that's going to take a little bit of cleanup work. Uh, additionally, I had I have an issue with the pop theme on terminal specifically, and this actually broke on both the built-in GNOME terminal and on Tilix. So if I launch these terminals here, as you see, I Tilix is still I haven't actually fixed Tilix just yet, uh, but it overwrote or borked or did something with the pop OS theme colors. So I actually had to take this um, my GNOME terminal here and go in and manually do like the the um, what is it do like the choose color and find the color in the in the window in some other window and copy it over in order to actually get the right color as the backdrop because it it just broke the um, the pop theme colors here. And it also broke the pop theme colors here in Tilix as well. And this happened on both my desktop and on my laptop, which was a little bit interesting. As you can see, this actually broke the, the text colors in Tilix as well. So I don't know. Uh, just something to be aware of is it, it might mess up the theming on your terminal and it will take a little bit of uh, trial and error and tinkering to get that back again. Another thing that I've noticed is Windows snapping is a little bit weird now. Uh, I, 
I, I don't it doesn't happen consistently, but if I if I do the window snapping by taking the window and snapping it, see there it worked, but sometimes it's not gonna work for me now. But sometimes if I snap the window oh there, so I I snap the window on this side of the screen and it shot over to this side. And sometimes it shoots all to the other monitor, like it'll phase over to a different monitor completely. So there's a little bit of an issue, I think, in the new version of GNOME. Oh, there it goes. It shot all the way to the um, to the right-hand side of my other monitor. So I think that there is an issue in the GNOME 3.8.1 with Windows snapping, which is a little bit annoying. Oh, there, it did it again, which is a little bit annoying, but perhaps not the absolute end of the world. Can I do, do it a third time? No. And I haven't figured out exactly what causes it, but I don't know. Uh, so that's that's an issue that you may encounter. And let's see, were there any other ones? Oh, oh, there was one other change uh, that I forgot about, uh, which is the notifications panel is different now. So no longer are your calendar events actually listed here in the notifications portion. They actually show up over here underneath of the calendar, which is awesome because in the previous version of Dome, they showed up looking like an event or looking like a notification uh, that you couldn't get rid of. And they just sort of sat here. And if you had a whole bunch of events on your calendar for a given day, then the... Um, <laughs> your notifications panel is just full of calendar events and not notifications. So nice to see this change. This is this is a welcome change in, as far as the interface goes uh, as well. And so all in all, I I like I like it. Uh, there weren't a ton of changes. This is only a minor a minor release of Ubuntu, so you would expect only a minor update for Pop. But it does have a couple of issues. Uh, obviously, you always have those problems. I've also had 3.8.1 um, on, speaking of GNOME, crash a few times. Now, it's been fairly graceful crashing. Particularly, I've noticed it crashing with, of all things, Pygame, or at least a library built on top of Pygame that I use in my programming courses. It's just a little textbook graphics library called uh, Standard Draw, which is actually quite nice. But I've noticed that when I have a standard draw window open from a Python program that I'm writing in class, for example, will result in a full-on GNOME desktop crash and reset, which it kills the Python program, uh, but it actually leaves everything else okay. My Even my Teams meeting and the screen share and everything doesn't get affected, but it does, the screen does flash and GNOME reboots and kills the, the Python. So I found that interesting. That never happened before the update. These things happen with new software, so you got to work the bugs out. And all in all, I'm quite pleased, particularly with the tab stacking. So those are some of my thoughts on Pop OS 20.10. Uh, please let me know what you think of the release in the comment section down below. If you've had any any issues, or if there's any feature that I missed that you think is quite nice, uh, feel free to let me know. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it interesting. And I will see you in the next one.